We're all familiar with the notion that science looks for law-like regularities in nature. Law is an important part of our modern scientific conception of the world. In this video, I'm going to focus on epistemically loaded uses of the term law. Here's our ranking of scientific vocabulary in terms of where they typically rank on a survey, where you're measuring the degree of evidential support that is implied by the use of a term. Laws rank very high in these surveys. Let's look at a few examples of these epistemically loaded uses of the term law. Law, a statement based on repeated experimental observations that describe some phenomenon of nature. Proof that something happens and how it happens, but not why it happens. Example, Newton's law of universal gravitation. So laws describe repeating patterns in observable phenomena. The assumption is that you can measure these phenomena and the behavior is regular and predictable. Uh, notice the word proof. We wouldn't describe one of these patterns as a law unless there was evidence that it was a reliable and predictable pattern. So laws under this description are the sort of thing that we have strong evidence for. And this makes it an epistemically loaded definition. Here's another one. Scientific laws are short, sweet, and always true. They're often expressed in a single statement and generally rely on a concise mathematical equation. Laws are accepted as being universal and are the cornerstones of science. They must never be wrong. This definition captures the notion of laws as regularities that have no exceptions. It's not a law if it's only true some of the time. That alone doesn't make it an epistemically loaded definition, though. What makes it epistemically loaded is defining a law as a true regularity of this kind, in such a way that if we could discover an exception to the law, then you couldn't call it a law anymore. A falsified law isn't a law anymore, according to this definition. That's what makes it epistemically loaded. Another way that the concept of a law is used in epistemically loaded ways when people talk about laws and theories and hypotheses in terms of a historical progression of a scientific idea. They'll say things like, first, an idea starts out as a hypothesis, and then we test it, and if it survives these tests, our confidence grows, and at some point maybe it graduates to become a theory. And if it proves to be an exceptionless regularity, then it might become a law, which is treated as a kind of pinnacle of scientific achievement. There's a lot wrong with this as a general view, but there are some examples that fit the pattern, so it's not hard to see how people could be led toward this idea. In fact, the Wikipedia article on laws of science expresses just this view. Quote, laws differ from hypotheses and postulates, which are proposed during the scientific process before and during validation by experiment and observation. Hypotheses and postulates are not laws since they have not been verified to the same degree and may not be sufficiently general although they may lead to the formulation of laws. A law is a more solidified and formal statement distilled from repeated experiment. So this is that progression view. Hypotheses start out as untested ideas, and if they're sufficiently general and are verified, they can become laws. If you want to see people fighting over the definition of a law and what should count as a scientific law, check out the talk page on that Wikipedia article. At the time that I'm producing this video, it's quite a mess. And after we finish the section on laws, the confusions on this page will be even more noticeable to you. I just want to make you aware that there's this view out there that tries to interpret the vocabulary of science in terms of stages of the process of scientific inquiry. And the progression of an idea from its early stages, where it starts out as a mere hypothesis, to its later stages, where it's been successfully confirmed by observation and experiment, and it's accepted into the canon of established theories and laws. I think this is where a lot of our intuitions about the epistemic significance of these terms comes from, why these kinds of rankings seem natural to us. But as I've said, we also use all of these terms in epistemically neutral ways. And in fact, the really interesting issues from a philosophy of science standpoint all revolve around these epistemically neutral senses of these terms. And nowhere is this more true than with the case of laws. So let's move on now and talk about the epistemically neutral meanings that we associate with the concept of a scientific law and a law of nature. 